Hello and good afternoon. Thank you for joining our December 3rd, 2020 online seminar series. Today we're focusing on our Dane Detect lightning measurement system. We're really excited about this. I'd like to introduce myself, Mark Hendricks, with Dane and my colleague who's running the back office side of our presentation, my colleague Stephen Weber. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Stephen. So we're really excited about the Dane Detect Lightning Measurement System. <clears throat> so I'd like to start with the problem statement. And we see this uh, pretty much across the country. Wherever you see turbine, wind turbine blades that aren't spinning and doing their job, um, there's probably some damage, of course. But this is why you need the Dane Detect system. We'll show you these are the components and we'll show you what it does. So the, the problem really is lightning strikes on wind turbines. They, they, you, we, of course, have a very valuable asset. And when it's not generating electricity, it isn't paying for itself. So this is really a, a, an important aspect of lightning protection for these wind turbines. So. We know that lightning induces high downtime and damages. And that equals high maintenance and high repair costs. So we're really focusing on how to control. So this is a really good slide that introduces some of the aspects of lightning that are difficult to, to understand just through visual day-to-day -day lightning events. But <clears throat> I've got a couple of demonstrations. I've got a cloud to ground image and i've got a upward ground to cloud image and the reason that these are important to distinguish is that upward flashes are actually the most prevalent uh, winter type of activity that occurs on wind turbines and the real problem is is that it's got a, what's called the long stroke it's also called the icc event the continuous current event and the problem is, is that this long stroke is very difficult to detect through what we would call uh, other means of lightning detection. And what, what I mean by that is it takes a particularly sensitive low threshold sensor to actually detect that long stroke portion of the lightning event. And so there are very, there's some really great products out there like StrikeNet and by Sala that give us lightning reports, but they don't show you the long stroke event. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that long stroke really incurs a lot of damage you know, into wind turbine and other assets. So I've got a little video clip I'd like to show. And leader attachment so it really did a good job showing what that actually is so this is a few discussions of the scientific definitions and what's measured what's capable of being measured but what you see are spike events and then these longer duration events that are actually far lower in magnitude but they're very long duration and what that'll do is it'll it'll generate a lot of charge. And this is an interesting event that was captured at a tower in Germany. And what they showed is that there was actually no what you would consider the high lightning, the, the 10 kA or the 100 kA lightning strike. This was actually only 
an ICC event. It had a fairly long duration in milliseconds and a fairly low peak magnitude relative to what we think of as lightning strikes. And it's really important to see this because it really is occurring. And if you don't have a sensitive measuring system, you'll never know that these occurred. And so you'll be getting damage on your wind turbine and won't be able to show the lightning event even occurred. And so here we see the, the map of the event and the waveform that was captured. And it's really good to understand how this all plays out. So lightning damage. So lightning has several causes and effects. So the main effect from the long, what we consider the 10 by 350 peak magnitude stroke is a peak current. And it drives what you would consider ohmic heating and mechanical stressing and arcing. But we also have these long duration events that actually carry a tremendous amount of charge. And these cause material melting and material erosion, for instance, on ball bearings and other, other load bearings, members of a wind turbine. And in the laboratory, we're able to show the, the actual event and the, the, the actual types of uh, damage that you would expect to see from these what are considered lower magnitude events, longer duration, but lower magnitude. And we've done a tremendous amount of research in our laboratories in the Dane headquarters in Germany. And we in, engage with manufacturers of wind turbine structures, and we show them the withstand capability of the built-in lightning conductors, the embedded conductor that is in the wind turbine blades. And here we see the effects. And you can see that it's that it creates a tremendous amount of spalling in this metal plate. You actually have melting, you have molten dribbles of, of metal that are now you know freely you know rolling around and causing damage of their own. And so this is these are the effects that we can show, and this is what we see in the field. So it's it's really nice to be able to do laboratory experiments that actually represent the real world events. <clears throat> so, so here's a few images that show the comparison of melting the blade receptor at the first strokes, and then also what happens over the long duration event. So the, of, of course, the primary stroke, the, what we call the, the 10 by 350, 200 Ka, of course it creates erosion and melting. But you also see from the, the low amplitude event, the tremendous charge that occurs over that long time interval, comparatively long time interval. And you see smaller but deeply melted areas, erosion pitted throughout the, the test unit. So Dane Detect, what is it? So we've got a couple of really good slides to show what the Dane Detect system uh, is, and then we'll talk about what it does. And so, what we've got is a Rogowski type coil, and it's actually a dual coil. And what's important is that it's able to have a measurement, a high fidelity measurement of that peak impulse current, but it also is able to measure with a separate coil, the fidelity of the low amplitude continuous current. And that's really important to distinguish our product from other available services. So, as part of the system, you also have to have an, uh, several uh, pieces of equipment that are installed inside the nacelle, and that includes an integrator that that communicates with the coils, gives it a combined data signal that then goes to the data logger, and the data logger is what connects through cellular connectivity or through your Modbus in your nacelle and it talks back to the cloud and then the data gets stored and we'll talk about that in much greater detail and a fourth set of components are the blade detectors and this will tell you exactly which blade was struck and it gives you an impulse level uh, 
sort of a high and low impulse level. We'll talk about that in, in more detail. But these are the main components. So it's a, actually quite a simple system. But it's important that it's installed directly on the blade nacelle at the root, right where it's entering the hub, and then directly around the inside of the nacelle around the rotor, but also in a wide enough circle to capture all of the available flux. And we'll talk about that some too. And then the final component, of course, is the web interface back to the cloud where we can then show the data. So the arrangement of the coil, it actually has to be installed around the rotor shaft, but in a wide arc. You don't want to capture just the rotor because actually some of the currents are flowing through the slip rings, some of the currents are flowing through other parts of the, of the entry into the nacelle. So it's important that that Brigowski coil creates a big enough loop around the inside of the nacelle to capture the lightning flux. It's also uh, possible, of course, to put that Rogowski coil around the swivel joint at the nacelle. And we have some customers that actually prefer to, to use that as a location because you're, you're not having to fight with the rotor generator and you can actually get it around the areas in order to capture the flux very effectively. So this is, that's a, an arrangement that gives you some other possibilities but it still captures the same sets of data. We also have customers that wanna put it at the bottom of a tower. In fact, we have customers that aren't in the wind turbine business at all that are just towers. And so this is an indication of, you can use this right at the base of the tower as well. And, and again, you're capturing the flux of the lightning current as it flows through the Rugowski coil. So the data logger. This is really the brain of the system and it captures the data and then reports it back to the cloud application. It's fairly simple, it's a DIN rail mount. It does require 24 volt uh, power and this is why it's a type of a device that would be installed inside of the nacelle, probably in the control cabinet interface that you have already. So it's not taking up a tremendous amount of real estate but it's giving you this uh, particular service. This is a key piece of it and we call it the data logger. We also have some versions of this that are uh, wired specifically for uh, SCADA or internet interface. But it's important to know that the data logger still performs these functions and it's installed in the nacelle. Okay, so we also have what we call the Brigowski coil and the integrator. The integrator is what basically combines the data from the two Rogowski coils. Remember, it has a, a low amplitude coil and a high amplitude coil. And this is what gives you that wide bandwidth of measuring. So you can, you can actually capture events as low as 60 amps of continuous current and as high as 250 kA of impulse current. And it will truly capture the scientific waveform as if it were an oscilloscope measuring the, the data. And that's a really important aspect of this system. And then we have the blade detection system. And, and usually you would need three of these. One of these are installed on at the, at the hub, uh, what's called the, the hub of the blade. And right as it's entering the rotor shaft into the nacelle, and what it does is it simply straddles the lightning current cable that's already installed in the blade that's intended to divert lightning current safely. But what it's able to do is straddle that lightning current, detect it, and give you two signals. It's either greater than 100 amps or greater than 5,000 amps. It's not as high fidelity, but it tells you the event occurred and it tells you specifically which of your turbine blades was struck. And of course, this is all part of the value of the system to, to, to help you understand where it occurred, when it occurred, and on what specifically what turbine blade it occurred on. So we've installed quite a few of the systems already, and this is a really good photograph showing the installation of 
the blade detect unit and you can see it's installed on the, the actual blade shaft. It communicates through a wireless Zigbee connection, sort of like Bluetooth, but the other product. And it's wireless, so of course, battery operated. It does require maintenance on the battery. The battery life, of course, can be uh, monitored. And this also shows you the installation of the Rigowski coil. And this is what's important is that it's it's a wide loop around that rotor shaft. You don't want to snug it right up against the rotor shaft because you can see some of the lightning currents will flow through the wall and you won't be measuring that flux. So you want to make sure you're capturing all of the flux possible to give you the most high fidelity and the most detailed information. So this is really the key about what the product does. It measures the event. You get an indication of the peak current. You get a measurement of the continuous current. It also calculates the specific energy that was delivered through that lightning strike, the charge content. And what's really important is the maximum rise time. This tells you that, that uh, term, you hear the term DIDT, the change of current over time. And the faster it rises, the higher the voltage that it can induce into the wind turbine system. And these are all pieces that you can use to diagnose the event. And it then tells you that it occurred and how bad it was. So if you're monitoring your system and you detect an incredibly high peak current, it will tell you that you now have a, a victim and that your maintenance schedule can then be accommodated accordingly. So really the competitive advantages over other products is the accuracy and the fact that it really does a great job capturing the ICC events, especially the ICC only events. So now in here, of course, in our Northern hemisphere, North America and Europe, we're entering the winter months and we actually would expect based on observational data from the meteorological uh, institutes that we'll see more upward flash events and more ICC only events in the winter months. In fact, 80 to 99% of the lightning in the winter is an upward event. And so your wind turbine, of course, is a uh, uh, high, high product. It's a high asset, it's a, it's a tower. And so it's going to be attracting more lightning. So it's easy to install. It gives you an independent data connection to, and it, it's easy to administer through our cloud system. So you can get at your data and you can understand what's happening on your wind turbine systems. So we have three versions. Basically the, the sets of products that I've just described give you three functional systems. Basically you can detect just the blade event. And so you install three blade detection units with a data logger. And this gives you what we call the basic data. It tells you the time of the event, which blade was hit, and essentially a, a, a threshold, 100 amp or greater than 5,000 amps. And what it's doing is it is basically has a small hall sensor inside of that data blade detection unit that's out on the blade, and it saturates. And so it's not a high fidelity sensor, but it tells you the events occurred. And that's what's really important about the blade event. Then we have what we call the medium version, which is the data logger with just the Rogowski coil. Now you get the time of the event and detailed lightning parameters from that set of dual Rogowski coils. And then we have what we call the full version, which gives you everything. You have the blade detection, you have the Rogowski coil detection, you get detailed time information, and of course, which blade was hit, which is important for, for many of our customers. So depending on what you're doing, for instance, we do have customers that are running these on towers. They're not wind turbines, they're just towers. Well, they don't have blades, so you need just the Rogowski coil, of course. But still, you're able to get their, this scientific information, which is really useful for both planning your maintenance and for documenting what caused the damage and this is really a big issue for our customers why am i getting all these failures in my wind turbines so what does it do and what does it look like well this is the data captured 
and it brings it into our cloud system and we have uh, a, a nice little control screen set up and basically a basic system will tell you that a blade in this case blade one was struck at the 5ka level or greater and that's what's important to understand this is at least 5ka or greater that's what this is telling you and then it gives you a history of the events and you can go back and look at what's going on and you can see that your blades are being struck and this is really great data collection and data analysis and of course data access so that you can use this to make decisions so here we have the blade detector unit and this is what it looks like when it's a smaller event the whole, the 100 amp threshold so you can see it tells you that it's at least 100 amps but not greater than 5ka that's so you do have some discrimination of the data it's nice because it tells you that the the basic magnitudes and that's what we call our basic system so it's detecting the strikes on the blades then we have the full version and this is really interesting this is where you get an actual scientific waveform that you can come back and analyze later it also does extremely helpful things it, it actually shows you the the current magnitude of the strike so you get that waveform you get the max didt the the, the rise this will give you an indication if you have other arcing and sparking. It gives you the energy that was delivered into the through the system, and it tells you the charge. But also, it accumulates the charge, so you can actually get it an idea of the accumulated damage over time. So maybe your blade gets struck one time. Okay, well you have some some indication that there was a strike. But if you're getting a lot of strikes out in your let's say wind turbines in florida which is going to give you a lot of lightning activity well here you can see that it accumulates a tremendous amount of charge over time now the charge doesn't get stored like in a battery but that charge is actually creating damage and so this tells you the event and then how much it it added to your accumulated damage we've got another set of uh, data that it can accumulate it tells you which event you can go back and pull the system find the event look at it do an analysis find out if that was the day that the the a particular storm occurred or you can correlate it with with your maintenance schedules but essentially it's giving you a really good indication of the entire set of data that was captured now this is a really interesting part of the the aspect here this is an event that was only a low level icc event and you can see it's a low level 200 amps not tremendous amount of current but it actually persisted for some amount of time and that's what's really interesting about the the full version data it's it really gives you a scientific measurement of the actual events and then of course logs them for prosperity so that you can come back later and make decisions now here's a uh, an event that was captured this was an incredibly high event 146 ka and it tells you when it occurred it gives you a waveform of the event it tells you the amount of charge and then the accumulated charge through up to date and so this is part of that system it's telling you what happened and tells you precisely which blade it tells you that what the blade detector saw but it also integrates all that information with the Vygotsky coil information so it really gives you a, a really great snapshot of that event and you can come back and do analysis of this and then this is a nice uh, couple of images of of what the actual cloud web interface looks like it tells you the events giving you date time stamps it gives you a really great information about what's happening on your wind turbine and again it's capturing that low level event as well this is just another slide showing you the icc type data that's that's being gathered um, remember you can toggle through you can look at your ICC, you can look at the high impulse. It gives you a really great way to look at the event. So you can discriminate between the different charge content and the amount of current that was flowing when this lightning strike hit that wind turbine. 
And here we have a, a, another really nice indication of the data capture, the amount of charge, again, that charge, which will, which will cause damage, and then the accumulated charges. So it, it really gives you a great handle on the data that's being captured. And here's a really good data capture of what's considered a fairly mild event. It's, it's, it's more like what would be an ICC event. So it's, it's not an incredibly high strike, but it still persisted for so many milliseconds that it delivered quite a bit of charge. And then again, your accumulated charge over time. So we've also installed these units at towers, as I had mentioned. And this was really important because now that the, the information about what's striking your tower is just as important. And we've done a great deal of simulation and trying to look at what's happening inside the tower in this case, we modeled, we did a really detailed modeling of the tower. And what we're able to show is that because of the height of that tower, it's a 100 meter tall tower, what you can actually see that there's a wave propagation difference between the steel tensioning cables for this pre stressed concrete and the lightning current cables that are in this tower. And so because of the difference in the travel velocity between those current carrying conductors, you're actually able to show that you're going to be getting high voltage built up between conductors, even though they're still electrically equipotentially bonded together. Because of that wave propagation speed, you can actually determine a lot of extra information. And of course, you would put your Rogowski coil around the base of the tower, and now you're able to capture all of the current striking in that unit. And here was an event that was captured at that tower, and you can see it, it actually looks a lot more like an ICC event. It's actually a low impulse with a long duration. And that's exactly what we described as that ICC event. Now, the, a lot of questions about how accurate is the device. Well, it's actually very high fidelity. The Rogowski coils measure just about as accurate as an oscilloscope in a lightning lab test. And so we're able to show the same peak and exactly the same trend of the, of the actual lightning measurement. So as I said earlier, this is a, a, a very effective and very high fidelity measurement system that you can use to capture the data. So cellular network connectivity. Right now, it's uh, difficult because of the USA certification to get the LTE uh, connectivity for cell phone. We are planning to, to get that in place. Uh, at this time, we just simply suggest to use the Modbus connection with your own internal uh, modem connections to that to that tower. And so it would be a a modest amount of, of data collection to tell that Modbus system to contact you. But it still connects back to our cloud-based monitoring system, which we have in beta development, which is some of the slides I showed you earlier that are capturing excellent fidelity of the data. And the benefits for the customer. Now you can estimate if a maintenance of the turbine is necessary to avoid secondary damage to the blades. If you get a strike and it's nearing its uh, damage point, you do not want to have blade liberation of that, of that uh, uh, catastrophic failure. Uh, more benefits, prevention of subsequent damage. So if there's a strike, the longer that strike damage persists, the more it'll accumulate. Reduction of downtime, of course, that's what you want. Reduction of maintenance and repair costs because you know exactly when to go and what to, to try to troubleshoot. And confirmation about the lightning event. And this is something that you can use with the owners and with the insurance industry so you can show what's causing, with scientific data, you can show what's causing your damage on your sites. And this all equals cost savings for the operators of our, of our wind turbine assets. 
So again, you get you get an ability to know which blade was struck, and then you can come back and do high fidelity blade visual checks because you know exactly what to go look for. You can do quick repairs because you know what what occurred, and you can get out on site. You can prevent blade liberation, which is of course a huge cost, and you can show your insurance carriers exactly what's going on with your wind park. So I've got one more quick video that just gives a summary, a nice video. visual summary of the system. So lightning conductors in the blade, it passes the Blade detect unit, the blade detect unit and the data logger, it combines the signal and analyzes it in due time. So this all occurs in real time. You will, you'll see the event, you'll get notice, and you can alert your maintenance crew immediately to get assets deployed to the tower. An hour. System, I'd like to open the up for questions. Stephen, did we get any questions this afternoon? Um, Mark, we have not received any um, submitted questions. Um, okay. But yes, but um, please feel free to email us. Um, you, you you have my email address and in the invitation to this webinar. Please feel free to email us, and we will address any um, requests or comments or questions that you have. Um, while we were talking, um, I see some questions coming in now. Excellent. <laughs> um, perfect. Uh, Mark, um, how is the polarity detected? Is the Rodowski marked, the Rodowski quill marked for positive, negative? It's a, it's dual polarity. There's no, it's a, it's essentially, it's a <clears throat> current transformer. It does not have polarity, so it doesn't really matter which direction you wrap it around. And then, do we need a specific earthing beside the lightning protection? Uh, well, that's the beauty of the system. It's it actually it's actually uh, field deployable. So, however, however the the tower is earthed already is 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 suitable and. But you know that's sort of an interesting question because it can lead you to other analysis. For instance, if you know you're getting extremely high surge events, lightning events, it will tell you an indication of whether or not your earthing is sufficient. So it, it can give you more diagnostic tools for your design and, and future upgrades at the site. Is there any calibration to be done in the equipment later to warranty a correct wave capture? Uh, that's all part of the initial setup, and that's because that actually is a valid question. Because as it, when you first install it, you do have a a setup procedure, and it uh, in the field, but it doesn't. It's not something that you have to come back with a, an oscilloscope and calibrate. It's just a matter of getting it set up correctly, so that it's not capturing spurious events. You know, like a bird landing on the turbine blade, and it somehow induces a uh, a signal. So it's really part of the initial setup. And then we have a question. Um, how long do the batteries last in the blade monitors? Right now, we're, we're expecting the battery life to be uh, at least two years. Um, that's, but again, that's part of the installation process where you would, uh, carefully install it and, of course, apply fresh batteries. 
And again, what is the lifetime um, the, of the system, the expected lifetime of the system, Mark? Well, the, the, of course, really the only maintenance is on the batteries out in the blade detect system. They're, the rest of it is really a, a non-invasive uh, system. So there's really nothing that is um, expected to wear out necessarily. Um, we would, of course, uh, advise that the installer apply electrical surge protection in the cabinet that the system sits in because the lightning event that causes surge in your control cabinet, it could, have, it, um, in fact, it could damage our Dane Detect system. So of course we want uh, to suggest that the installer also put in proper electrical surge protection on the 24 volt system itself. How many of these systems does then have installed globally already? Well, one of my colleagues in Germany has personally installed six of them himself. Uh, I believe our number is in the tens of systems globally right now. It's fairly new to the market. Uh, we Most of the installations have been in the Europe. Then have we detected strikes or lightning attachments to different blades on the same turbine during a single lightning strike? That's actually a really interesting question. I interesting. don't have an answer for that, but we can look into that. Interesting question. And then um, yeah, does, yeah. we have protection relays. Uh, how uh, the protection relays are not protect upward light. Um, that's how we phrase the question. Um, Adit, if you can rephrase that a bit better, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure what, what exactly you're asking. And that's about it. Um, Adit, we'll reply, in to your question. Question. we'll reply to your question in an email. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really great. I really appreciate everybody's uh, participation, great attendance today. Um, we look forward to uh, answering further questions. Um, We've got, uh, as I mentioned, we've got uh, a, a fairly good, uh, as I mentioned, in the in the tens of units deployed, and so it's producing excellent results, excellent fidelity of the result. Okay. Yes. Well, yes thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody, great. for joining. I, I really appreciate the the time from everybody today, and uh, thank you for your participation. Of course, the event is recorded and will be loaded onto our uh, YouTube channel and in our uh, Dane Learning Center. So thanks, everybody, and uh, be safe out there. And that concludes our webinar. Thank you.